Okay, I gotta keep this PG this time. We're going to push Corey's 50, or he's actually gonna drive his 55 Pontiac. Supposedly he says it's gonna run. I'm a little skeptical right now. Then we gotta push the Chevelle up. Henry J's gotta come out of his garage. We're gonna push my 55 in, and then tomorrow morning we're gonna start. He wants to go to the city tomorrow morning. Now get some we video. are, we are supposed to go. Supposed to get a video game or something. Anyway, so we're gonna put the motor in the 55 now tomorrow. So that's kind of the plan here. We should do a will it start to be on the 55 Pontiac. It hasn't run like since we brought it in the springtime. That ah, should fire up. It should. Okay. So yeah. that's the game plan here. It's still hot. Too dang hot. Okay. Show that plastic who's boss. I'm boss, boy. Will it start, Casey? And we have parts of a big block Chrysler transmission. Yeah, I got to make one more tool up just to put that back together. That's just a guinea pig transmission before we try Chris's one. Although that casing's it had a sprag glue up in it, so it's not good. For a big block Chrysler, 383 or 440? 383. But it will fit a 440, but it was. Yeah. You still beating up that plastic bag? So yeah, so we're, we're, we're going to attempt to do it. I, I'm fairly confident we can do it. I mean, you know, uh, we'll say uh, the 727 is not the most difficult tranny in the world, so. Finding people around here to even want to do this stuff's getting harder to do anymore. So, I think if we change all the bushings, change all the seals properly, I'm fairly confident we can do it. They're willing it starts not going good so far. Look for any cars, <laughs> I looked. I can't really look if I'm holding the. We need to get a four wheeler or a trike or something. Might be towed in a little bit. Yeah, could be. I was actually going to use to grab the Pontiac and hook a chain up to the Pontiac and drive. <laughs> well, that would make for a good view. I'm not really going to tow it. We ah. should have towed the damn thing. I'm like, Chris, I'm sitting down. <sighs> okay, take it, guys. Today's the day. We're going to finally put that ugly looking monstrosity with my fancy racing cylinder heads. 
better if that was. Yeah, actually there was, there's back in the uh, 60s, there actually was a 55 Chevy. You had a 392 uh, Hemi in it with uh, six carbs in it. It was in hot, it was uh, early 60s, I do believe. But uh, yeah, that's a true story. Um, looks like a really shitty day out today, it's raining. Here comes the booger from who knows where. Oh, he's getting a drink. He hasn't it looks done like it. he had his mouth full, so he's probably having cookies. Yeah. But uh, yeah, today's the day. I guess we're going to put that thing in here. And uh, I don't think we're going to be going cruising tonight. But anyway, I just want to say uh, thank you to uh, Jason Budweiser for uh, giving me a t-shirt. J-Ride Customs. Check him out. He's another uh, local guy, local YouTuber. He's got some pretty good uh, videos. So yeah, uh, I'm not, honestly, I'm not looking forward to putting that thing in there. Actually, it's not bad. It's this stupid thing that I don't like and that pipe there that I don't like but that's Ryan's gonna fuck around or screw around with it first that bomb in the video we'll put that in so I guess uh, first things first take the hood off yep it's raining good on now yeah I know it's raining I don't think we're going out cruising tonight look at the maple seeds on here already Jesus can't escape them anyway Today is not much, there's less motivation today than yesterday. Yeah, but uh, if you had a 235 in here. Yeah. Uh, then I gotta work with Dale again tomorrow, put that gearbox up. That's not good motivation. Dale's then you'll a, wanna work on this. Dale's our resident crazy guy at work. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't watch the videos. He doesn't have the internet. Oh. So I think I'm pretty safe there. Well, he's gonna shoot me, I don't know. <laughs> if you see me mysteriously disappear one day. I don't know. Goofy yeah. Dale. If, yeah. he, if he kills you, can I have this? Sure, I don't care. When I, yes. what, what friends have said, when I'm dead, I'm dead. I don't care. Not my problem. Put the You're government sorted out. Yeah. <laughs> you already got one. <laughs> no, I'll take this. Let the government sorted out. Yeah. Alright, I guess we'll uh, back in a minute. We'll take the hood off and uh, start prepping that ugly thing. Yeah, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah, so anyways, we bought the... Because some of the stuff up here, he, I bought the last motor mount for his Chevelle, or sorry, motor tranny mount. And uh, so we figured when we were from Rock Auto there, they're like four bucks for just the cheapy ones. He's not making any horsepower. But see, you look at subtle differences. The Korean one has a 10 mil bolt, and the Chinese one has a 7 16 bolt. Also, even just the design of that is a little bit different because one's a Korean, one's a China. They're both identical part numbers, Anchor 2360s. But uh, yeah, you just get into this shit now, and you don't know what you get these days. So it's always a good little tip there just to see what you're getting. Well, yeah, especially you're underneath there and you're trying to put the by, nut on. By two? <laughs> Power by two. Always. But you're trying to put the, the nut on, you're like, well, this ain't fitting, but. So it's just a good little tech tip to see yeah. what you're buying or what, and you get it. But I guess also when you pay for $4, you get what you pay for. Yeah, you can't even buy three donuts at Tim Hortons for that. No, I know. That's wack, yo. All right, let's pull the hood off. Yeah. When's pizza coming? It's 145. <sighs> Okay, someone who had the master cylinder off this thing before it cross-threaded uh, one of the bolts. So most of my better stuff's at work there. But so we uh, had a little chasing die here. And just for instance, one inch OD, I just used a, uh, a number three Morris taper to an ER40. Ran that with adjustable wrench on the back. And there we go, now we got our thread fixed up again. Because that's what we're using here. Just an ER, uh, just number three to an ER40, call it. And just able to suck in the little die. That way, it's welded from the inside, spot welded, welded, whatever. So rather than taking that off and cutting it, makes it a hell of a lot easier. Lunch of cut men's to do rather than fucking around all day. Oh, oh rather than <laughs> farting around all day. Sorry, people, I do swear a little bit much. I dropped the F sharps. Can you check the other one too? Or? Yeah, I'll probably just chase them on because it's just, it's just a threading die. It's not a cutting die. So, so like I said, we should be able to make it all life easier here. Watch as we do this. Just to make life easier. Like I said, I have proper stuff, but it's in work right now, so and I don't feel like going a half hour. We gotta come go, first, and you gotta go a half hour there and a half hour back, so it's an hour out of your way. Or just do this. Christopher says it works, so. Okay, we got the motor up in the air right now. We're just getting rid of the lower down. <coughs> Change the low pressure line from a plastic to a copper. Trying to get that a little bit in closer when we do it to uh, the T lines in the back of the engine. Derek will be able to see where he's at, but it's uh, 
ready to drop down. She's tight. We pulled the, the front balancer off just to give us a little bit more room because the way it is, we got to kind of tilt it a little bit and then put it in. So it's kind of uh, it's a rigor roll getting her in, I'll tell you that much. But it, uh, we got it out, so we should be able to get it back in. But it's in theory. Kevin's eating pizza. Yeah, Kevin's eating pizza right now. And people will probably say, why didn't we pull the rat out? Well, because uh, the rat is tucked underneath these braces. They're welded in, so the whole front end has to come off. It's just the way uh, they did it. They, I think they welded pieces in the car while I was in the car, so it's difficult to get the rat out. So that's why we're doing it this way. Yeah, it would have been a cat's ass. We just put it in as one, one unit. Yeah. It made life a lot easier. But what do you do? All right, back in a minute. We're not going to film us uh, suffering, and there'll probably be a lot of... F sharps. There'll be a lot of swearing in this one. A lot of F sharps. Yeah, and all the turbo pipes or those are pain in the ass, apparently. That one's laid in. This one we can put in after, so. All right, we'll be back in a few minutes. Hopefully, hopefully, with the engine in. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got the uh, engine slowly going in. Uh, everything seems to be going good. Just fighting with the pipe and everything else. And uh, crossover tube, because it's all one piece connected it's to the manifold cut here yeah so it's uh, everything's going really well must be uh due to the uh, good luck charm of uh my new uh t-shirt by J uh, jason budweiser anyway thank you again uh so anyway i guess while chris is monkeying around with that uh i'm gonna make a gasket for the turbo this guy right there so kevin's not the greatest at the camera but he's learning Anyway, so uh, I'm gonna make a cheap little uh, gasket there. I'll make a gasket out of some paper here. Cheap way to do it. Dirty fingers. And voila. Cut that out and I'll have my perfect template for this fancy dancy stuff that uh, Bug bought or Ryan bought that's got, I don't know, some sort of gasket material stuff. So I'll make that in a minute. Slowly coming together. It just this thing fought us quite a bit, and yeah, wouldn't have that problems if they were ram horn manifolds, or if it was the regular small block. You like small blocks? I'm gonna convert them. Better than this. Well, this is fine. It's just it's just tight. That's all. Never, never. We should put an LS in the Hudson. <laughs> no. <clears throat> That'd be a pussy magnet. Actually, you'd probably get a clock magnet. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna be going cruising in that later. I mean, yeah. Anyway, I think we'll be back and I'm gonna go make my- uh, I don't think he can say that on TV, can he? No. Ryan drops F-bombs. That's not the C word though. <laughs> Whatever, it is what it is. Chris, you got some editing to do, even though he won't. All right, we'll be back in a minute. There we go. Hi. Right, well, we're getting, we're making headway. As you can see, it's tight in here. Corey's underneath, just torquing uh, the exhaust manifold gaskets right now. We got uh, one little bit of an issue to get a little bit of a clearance in here. We took the. Uh, oh. So you're okay. I'm on a balancer pulley. Problem as you can see here. So now I know how I'm going to do it, but it won't probably happen today. I'm going to make a couple of bolts different lengths with the threads, or like a threaded rod. We'll suck it in that way. We just have to put a little bit of pressure. It does move a little bit but it'll, it will just just make it and uh, yeah it's it's definitely tight we had to uh, put the the manifolds on first then put the spark plugs in so uh, hopefully the spark plugs don't gotta get changed anytime soon because it's not a fun job it's actually not bad from doing it underneath on your side's not bad Derek's side's worse so yeah. just because you have the exhaust yeah and the engine's still not down on the the mounts yet. On the mounts yet. We, I hope it isn't. We, we had to do the uh, exhaust first. What was the Ford car that they had to pull the lift the engine up to change the plugs on? One of the fancy Ford cars in the 60s or 70s. It was probably this, the, the Boss. Uh, was it the, the Boss's 429s or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, they had to pull the motor up to see. The, and you can see why, because there's just no room on these damn things. Yeah, because they had the shock tower right Right the in the way. Oh, I am she has shock tires, but you don't have any problem with big blocks. Yeah, because they got dainty little motors. <laughs> exactly. They were smart. Gutless. They didn't put stupid, big, heavy uh, 
thousand pound of engines in their cars. Or you could say they didn't have the R&D funds to do it. That's more what I would go with. Can you guys well, get that one from up here or no? I can get that one from up here, yeah. All right, that's cool. The engineer's in Kenosha, Wisconsin. I haven't done it, that's how you know. Oh. Did you get the other five, Corey? Yep. You guys still party? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm using, what is it, Rex, Red Flex gaskets? They, they guarantee them. If you tore them to 20 foot pounds, they're going to work. We can give you an infomercial show here in a minute. It doesn't matter if it's a big block Chevelle or a Mustang 289. Yeah, we're. How can you get in? Oh, there you go. Nope, there you go, right there. 20 foot pounds. A little bit of hair more. There you go. Yeah, we're right here. Rex Red Flex. Never heard of them. I've never heard them before. We're gonna see. Do they come from where'd they come from? This came from Somewhere. Piston Ring. I bought them off of Amazon. They were, I don't know, like 25 bucks off Amazon. They're made in the USA, they're guaranteed. So we'll see. Probably not. They say no retorking, so basically looks like a graphite, uh, graphite is best to take or whatever uh, equivalent the graphite is. So we'll report back in two weeks and say they blew out and be like, gosh. Oh, Burn the car. You give it two weeks. Excellent. <laughs> Chris gives it about two days. You put all the bolts on the side? Yeah, all six. Yep. Yeah. They're, they're not tight though, like I said, we left them loose. Like I said, that's going to be a bitch to do. All right, Corey's on the last spark plug bolt or spark plug. Derek's torque on that side. Exhaust manifolds, then we're gonna lower it down, see if we can get it onto the mounts. I think that's probably gonna be it for today. Could be. I bet you it's 4.30 already, or 5. It's close it's to 5. It's 5 o'clock on the nose. Yep. We're going cruising. I think we gotta, be, we gotta get it in because if you look right now, we're not that smart. We didn't uh, close the door. No. Yeah. Can't have the door open. Too many gypsies around here. <laughs> gypsies. Well, those, those redhead kids, they used to steal everything. Yeah. They stole the digital camera and the iPod out of my truck, man. And for the use of oil. Yeah. You left the door open. Why? Because you shouldn't have to lock it. We're in the sticks. But here's the here's the screwed up part. There was money in there. And there was a brand new digital camera. They took a digital camera that was old and worthless, but they didn't take the brand new digital camera or the money. So I don't. Evidently, our, our, our thieves here aren't that smart. No. Yeah, they also stole motor oil on my old Mustang. Twice, not once, but twice. It was about three years apart, so I thought at that time. But luckily those kids have all moved out of town now, so. And we have to go out tonight so Corey can give Dee Dee his Glenn Nicholson hat. What? Is that the camel Nicholson. one? Yes. Okay. I'm wearing a still hat, as you can see. I'm, I'm not included in any of these things here, so. Nice, plugs are in. Could have got it, well. We gave you a hat. Did you give me a hat? Oh, yeah, there's, there's a hat around here somewhere. Oh, Derek, do I get, I'll come out. Is that Casey's hat? Or? No. no. Okay, I thought that oh, was man. Casey. Five hours. Some up. Fuck. Watch your back on the license yeah, plate. I don't care for that. Oh, no, I just don't cut this at all. Back sore. Oh. And you're not able to sling lumber tomorrow. Oh, I'm not. I got a thankless job this week. Okay. Alrighty. You, you need the help up there? Yep. Back in a minute. Yeah, that shouldn't be too bad to do the coil pack and then get the spark plug down in there. I can fix that. Okay. We spent, I don't know, two hours putting this bloody thing back in? Anyways, it's back in. The crossover tube's in. Kind of fucked up here, but we pulled the harmonic balancer off to give us more room so we could rotate it. We should have put it back in before we put the manifold on, but I can get a 16 millimeter in there. It went on very easy, so I'm not too worried. That's gonna be probably tomorrow. I'll get a piece of 16 millimeter of threaded rod. Get in there with a, a swivel, and I should just be able, there'll, there'll be a bunch of farting around in there trying not to swerve. Get that done. And then we just gotta tighten the other crossover tube up. Put all the wiring back in. Tranny. Well, the tranny, of course. That, that, actually, that would be the easy well, part. The turbo, hopefully it fits good. One of the O2 sensors, it was so rotted, the one out the back here, it literally fell apart, so it's got to get a new O2 sensor in it. Yeah, no, the tranny, that would be the easy part. Yeah, I'm thinking the tranny should be relatively straightforward. Okay, I took the day off of work to get this damn thing done. I very rarely take time off of work, but I want to get this stupid thing done. So I just about got it on now. Problem is, you can see, we have the pipe, the 
we'll call it the crossover pipe between both exhaust manifolds is um, a little too tight. So uh, to give us more room, we pulled the balancer slash pulley off to give us more room to get it in. Problem is when we, not none of us looked, then we put it back on, it's like, oh, yeah. So luckily we were able to loosen the bolts again, pry it forward, you can kind of see we, a little bit of cut here. I'll probably put a band over here just where I cut it a bit. But the problem is now it's right in the center line of the crank. So how do you put that in? So luckily, like I said, the, I made a tool up here. We've been, uh, I was able to double nut it and drive it just with a 916 with a swivel to get it going. Now I'm able to do it just with a regular, uh, regular ratchet extension here. Luckily it's not that tight, but um, I just about have it here now. I might have to change it one more time. But you can see it's going on nice, but uh, yeah, this was must have been definitely an afterthought when they built it. It was like, oh fuck, because if you ever got to change, like, I got to do one more time because I got a little bit more. If you ever had to change this thing out, oh, you're in for a whole retreat. I'll tell you that much. Like I said, if if I were to do this again, I think I would cut it here and cut it here and put uh, joints in so you can actually just take it off, like similar to this joint here. Just use this joint here, sorry, and just put a joint here similar to that, so you just lift the whole damn thing out because. Uh, like to put the water pump in that's a bugger all with it. This would be a nightmare, especially if you ever change the rear main seal. But so yeah, luckily I'll uh, I want to get this tool popped out. I think I showed it before, but I'll just show the tool I made up. It's basically just a copy of just a small block Chevy one with a 16 millimeter thread. But I made it longer, and actually I'm glad I made it longer now because like I said, we're just able to double nut it, drive with a 916, and I'll pull it out one more time. I need to go forward about another 16 to an inch. It looks like so. I'm so careful. I don't want to touch the rad here. Or the, it's tight in here, I'll tell you that much. Somebody was asking about how, I think it was in one of the comments, how tight these motors are in here and there. They're tight. They're tight. You can see, I, I don't back in most of there. I can get my hand in behind any of it. She's tight. Also, if you're gonna do it to make your life easier, if you, if you choose not to take the cradle like we did, we probably should have. Pull your wiper motor out. It's, uh, it's touch and go. You're literally just touching it the whole way down. But yeah, it's, uh, they're tight in here. But yeah, I'll get this pulled off. I'll show it and we'll uh, do this and then we can get the uh, boost, brake booster back on. And then I think we're gonna maybe try to put the tranny in today. We just finished, finally torquing it to 200 foot pounds, which GM recommends. It was a brand new bolt from Rock Auto, like $3.81. That's the tool I made there, just a standard uh, harmonic balancer tool. We had to double nut it because I had to drive from here. I couldn't get into here. That's why I had this one. A little bit bitch, we kind of held it, get it up there. We're good. We inched it along as we went, so that way the threads would catch. We started out back there, go, I don't know, maybe two full turns, break the nuts, move them down, because we started up back there. Worked out good, I didn't design it to do like that, but it worked out good, it had extra threads on it, but uh, that was a really shitty job. Hope that's the last of the shitty jobs when this whole motor and just sucked. I'm hoping this turbo shouldn't be too bad. You can kind of see where we've, we've nicked it up a little bit when we pulled the motor out, but uh, I'm hoping when we go to, uh, to um, put the turbo on it's not too bad that pipe just needs to be tightened up Derek's starting to work on uh, the booster we'll get that whatever we get the tranny in today I don't know it's hot it'll be into the low 90s here again today depends how much ambition we got maybe we'll just kind of wrap up up on the top here we'll have to see how it goes so yeah so I just yeah so get, it, sometimes it comes in handy making tools because uh, yeah it uh, it was a bear to put on if you ever had to change that front seal like I said it would suck so what I feel like I'm a little bit paranoid on it was a new seal we pressure tested these guys pressure tested when I split my head it didn't leak there part of me almost wonders just to hook it back up to make sure it doesn't leak but it's a new seal everything went in straight so it should be okay but god that would suck if it's leaked though <laughs> but yeah so yeah we'll probably shoot a few videos as, as we're going on this today but uh, you can see why my forehead it's freaking sweating I'm not even working well doors are closed at least try to keep some of the cool in here for a while but I think it's a losing battle. But yeah, we'll get back at her and start putting some more stuff on. Okay, well the motor's in now, the tranny's in. Well, the list is getting shorter. Tomorrow we gotta hook the turbo up, the alternator's gotta go in. I gotta hook the coolant line up for the transmission, hook the shifter up, leave the brakes, starter, starter, get a new O2 sensor. But it is, uh, Thermostat. Yeah, thermo thermostat. Yeah. I don't know. It's a 2002. 
they didn't have one at the local uh, piston ring, so they had to order one in. So, I don't know. I figure oh, it can't be that uncommon. O2 sensor. Yeah, the O2 sensor because the one rotted out right there. The threads are still fine in here, but the threads on the actual O2 sensor, I'm going to pull it up because of the wire. But the threads went to pick it off and it just literally fell right out. So, get that. And then there's the little canister for the air breather for the turbo. That's got to go on. Yeah, the battery box. Battery box. There. I'm going to take the work tonight and sandblast it. New battery. Yeah, I'm going to buy a brand new battery. Drive shaft still got to go in. So still lots to do. We're shingling this weekend, weather permitting, so I don't think much is going to get done this weekend. I don't think it's going to get done this week, but you never I know. know. You guys get a lot of shit done tomorrow. I unfortunately, I, I, I can only play hooky today. I got to go to work tomorrow, so. At least yeah, we should be able to get all the rest of the accessories and starter and everything buttoned up tomorrow. Oh, I want, I got to make that other part for the heater, the heater, uh, uh, through five eighths and three quarter adapter. Oh yes. And just on the off chance, if the heater core doesn't work, I'm going to change it at a later date. If it doesn't work, we'll just put the damn loop back in it just so it doesn't uh, doesn't leak out on us. But but I think we're going to call it at night. Yeah, I've had enough for today. Four o'clock comes early for this guy, so I'll be sleeping at four o'clock. That's what I'm going to do. All right, it's the next day, and we're still working on the buttoning up to the end LS install on this 55. We have the, Derek just finished bolting down the turbo. We have the exhaust on, that was a pain in the ass. It was tucked underneath the, the rear spring and was jammed there for a bit. But uh, we got the alternator on. This little homemade doohickey is on, we believe, or that that's acting like a PCV valve because the normal PCV valve is underneath there and the original engine was, um, it was just pulled out. There was no valve. So I believe that acts as a PCV valve. There's a little oil sight gauge. So I just have to, I think we just have to put a little bit of oil in there so it, registers and then this is a breather so that's on um, we got some more of the vacuum lines on brand new heater hoses on Ryan put that on earlier so we're getting there uh, still got to hook up the oil line to the uh, turbo the Oil return line is on and attached to the pan, so that's done. Um, we're using high temp silicone on all the joints of the turbo, plus the, we made new gaskets. Okay, so we got a few more things done. Uh, the rad hoses are all all on the all the uh, piping for the turbo inlets on intercooler and all that jazz. Yeah, the intercooler is hooked up again. Uh, starters in. Uh, Corey's just got to fix one of the injector. Uh, yeah, <coughs> uh, I guess wires. One of the tabs is broken off, so this injector here just kind of sits in there and it just falls off. So this is going to be your uh, Penny's Hot Rod and Custom Zip Tie moment. I'll just uh, ghetto do that so it's not going to go anywhere and it won't run on seven cylinders or whatever bad things will happen. We know that this runs good on six cylinders. Yeah. Well, the old engine did. The old engine did. Hey, okay, we're... Uh gotten the or we're trying to get this the, the uh, ls engine started we've got it cranking over and firing but it doesn't keep running uh it cranks over nice it fires up first thing uh we'll show you that right away and it dies 55 pounds again and we only have we had a, a fuel pressure gauge we're at 55 pounds these engines we're 
red need at least 58 to 60 62 62 because we had problems with another tr half ton like we did this before and it had like 54 55 and the damn thing wouldn't run so we eventually changed the fuel pump and it fired right up but i i do remember having issues before these things and i i honestly can't remember who told me it was a long time ago, but they have to have like 58 to run so i'm hoping that's the problem I and mean, it's not the end of the world to change the pump in this thing we've gone over most of the sensors and uh check those out those look good uh we got everything plugged in like it was when we pulled the motor out so we're, we've been uh troubleshooting that so uh yeah it's not gonna be good starting on this video nope it could be July, by the way. We're going. We got a shingle a roof this weekend, so that kills this weekend. So if you know uh, had this problem before with an LS and a fifty five, but that doesn't matter. Put yeah. that in the comments. Uh, we might not have gotten it running by by the time with this video is up. So, or I might have been killed by crazy Dale, one of the two. Yeah, or we might burn it, or uh, pull it out and put actually straight six in it that's the next plan <laughs> but yeah we'll have to we'll have to more than likely we'll change the fuel pump and then we'll uh if that doesn't solve the problem then i mean there's not i mean there's several things it can be but i honestly don't know at that point because it, it, it just fires up just like that that's yeah. that's the weird part like i said we had a, a chevy truck do the identical thing to this so so uh We'll do a few more tests before we get too carried away here and just double check everything and triple check everything. But Yeah, and seeing that this is a, a sort of a bastardized wiring harness from a Tahoe into a Chevy, it's it's possible that one of the wires got broken inside the wiring harness when we were pulling it out. So that's very possible. Because after the hit, it did fire up. Like when we we did we yeah. did we did have the transmission in it, we did fire it up. Because it said that the back of the block was cracked and it was the start of ground terribly. But we did fire up. We probably ran it for what 15, 20 seconds, whatever it was. But it, it, it did fire up after. Yeah. But that's why I'm, I'm hesitant on the fuel pump. But it's just, I don't know. But like I said, just the pressure gauge shouldn't lie by rights. And I mean, literally, literally it's just plug and play. We just re replaced everything the way it came out before. So. Yeah. So if you know. Uh... If you have any suggestions of the, the what the problem could be, put that in the comments because we'll be uh, probably not working on it this weekend. We got our roof to shingle, so uh, yeah. If you uh, don't like this video, don't comment. <laughs> <laughs> if you like it, definitely comment, uh, share it, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. It's free. So just also before people comment on the ground. There is an engine ground, there's the chassis ground, there's four grounds on this hooked up just in case we were just, you know, being a little bit on the paranoid, sorry, because when Brent did this, there was three or four grounds, but all the grounds back that were there, so it is definitely, I do not see it being a ground issue. Right, we put an extra ground on it, so. So just, I mean, the one, one ground runs right to the battery, right to the engine. So, I mean, like I said, then we grounded, we're grounded right from the transmission to the body, we're grounded from the engine to the frame even i think there's a ground on there hooked up yeah and there's then one there. over there we put and then there's a wiring harness grounded to underneath the alternator so i'm thinking it's not a ground issue like i said and just judging by you like you heard how he just it fires up just instantly but then it just doesn't stay running we did try it obviously on the video level we tried we held the, the throttle the throttle open you know we'll, we'll say a little bit made zero difference it doesn't pick up fuel or nothing so Yep, so please like, share, and subscribe, and hopefully this won't be a burning husk on the next video. You never know, by the next video, we're doing a, well, I don't like doing burns, we're doing a burn on the next video, possibly. Uh, possibly, this is probably the only one that we would. I don't like doing, a burns are hard on shit. Well, you don't want to turn this turbo red hot? No. Break it in. Yeah, that's how you break the turbine, turn it red hot. But it, it's well broken in now. But, but unfortunately, I got to go into work here, so. Yeah, and we got to roof the shingle, start singling, so. We'll uh, see you on the next video if this thing 
runs or runs with a six cylinder or you also need the sound effects in here wah, wah, wah. see you on the next one bye, -bye.